Stories from the Storm is a project of the Houston Flood Museum in partnership with Houston Public Media and is supported by Houston Endowment. Visit HoustonFloodMuseum.org. Well, I'm glad to hear that you don't think of this as a blight on your childhood. No. <laughs> yeah, when I'm old and I got grandchildren. Gather around, children. I got a story to tell. <laughs> The morning that the water first came in, all of our phones went off, remember, for a tornado? And so we went outside and the water was almost to the front door. Do you remember? We turned on the TV. Okay. Dad made coffee. <laughs> I don't know why he made coffee in this time of emergency. And then you came inside and you were like, start putting things up that you want to keep. It was a neutral kind of feeling. Like when you've gone past panic and you've gone into the neutral state where you're like, <laughs> Okay, this is happening. Right, I remember that. And I remember you were texting and you said, Jet says her dad has a, a truck and he can come get us. And I said no, because by then the water was already like thigh deep in the street. And then you went away and then you came back like five minutes later and were like, Jet says her dad has a truck and a kayak. Yeah. <laughs> you remember? Yeah. And we were like, okay, come. But you left first. Yes, with, the, with dog. the dog and the dog food and blowing up the air mattress and trying to keep our dog on the air mattress because she kept on jumping out into the water. Trying to float her down the street. Yeah, she saw all her toys like dr go drifting by and she kept trying to go after them. And I was like, no, you have to stay on here. But that was in the house. Like that was the air mattress that we hadn't, we didn't go out on the street with the air mattress. That was no. floating in the house, remember? Yeah. Trying to keep her dry because she's so little. And Mr. Newcomb. Mr. Newcomb's like, towed you out. Yeah, we were going down the street and I kind of took it lightheartedly and I was waving at people who were out on their like doorsteps and I was like, hi, and they were like, what is she doing? I don't remember getting really scared until the next morning. So we all evacuated and then the rain stopped, remember? And your dad and I, we got Mr. Newcomb to take us back to the house and the water was gone and we swept and cleaned and then the water started coming back that night. And so the next morning we had to get to you and now everything had broken its banks. So we had to figure out how to wade through what looked like maybe neck deep water to get to you because we live north of the bayou and they live south of the bayou. But I remember getting texts from you going, are you there, are you okay? Were you getting scared? Yeah, I was and Jet was like, put down your phone. And I was like, no, I'm not putting down my phone. Yeah, that was a scary time. And right before we started to cross, um, this guy said, do you need to cross? And we said, yes. And he said, there are three guys with a bass boat that are shuttling people. They just came out. Uh, you know, they didn't even think about their own safety in a lot of cases. They were like, no, we're just gonna go and, and, um, and help. You've never seen the house. I never saw the inside. I couldn't bring myself to do it. Yeah, you yeah. never went back, did you? For the first couple of days, I didn't want you to go back. I knew it would upset you. Yeah. So what was it like going back to school that first time? Like, was that weird, that first day of school? You could tell the people who had flooded. You really? How? Yeah, because everyone was a little bit traumatized, but the people who were, got their houses flooded looked more traumatized. Is that right? Others. Yeah, I mean, but we didn't talk about it. Yeah. Nobody asked questions or? No, because, I mean, everybody in my class is really nice. And we're all like, you know, we're not going to push each other. So we didn't talk about it because school was like a nice way to, you know, yeah, I was really relieved for you and your dad when you both went back to school and work. Like, that felt like a bit of normalcy. Yeah. So we lost pretty much everything. Like, we don't have the stuff that we had before. Like, do you feel a sense of loss of the stuff we had, or you feel I did pretty at, comfortable? I did at first, but now I'm more like, a, you know, it's okay. It's It's gone. It's gone. It's in the past. So now I'm just, I'm starting from scratch. Like, you've had such a different childhood than I've had, right? Like from Definitely. everything, <laughs> from yeah. losing a house to to doing this, right? And to recording our story. I don't think this experience has been horrible. I think it'll actually be pretty cool. It'll be like, oh, I went through that. That's, yeah. that's intense, but that's cool. And also people were so nice to us, right? Like one guy showed up, he had drove, driven in from New Orleans and asked if he could help us clear out our house. And I was like, sure. And he said, um, you Houstonians were so great to us during Hurricane T Katrina. The least I could do is get in my car and drive up to help you guys. And then he had nowhere to stay because everybody was in hotels. He just drove all the way back that night. Like that was 10 hours, 10 hours of driving and like within 24 hours, it's just 
crazy. And 14 of those hours, he was helping us. Do you think you learned anything from it? Um, I should take people's help instead of like saying, oh, I can do this on my own. I've got it. I don't need your help. I can do it. Mm. And um, the world isn't a bad place. You just you just got to go through some traumatic stuff before you see the good. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you do. Yeah. That's true. That's true. But mm -hmm. it's there. The good's there, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure.